I was born in the Salvation Army home for unwed mothers, actually, in South Vancouver. And it's just like you hear from Ireland, right? Uh, the intent of the Sally Ann was to uh, have me adopted out. Hmm. And my mother, who was 15 or 16 at the time, um, wasn't going to have that. So mm -hmm. she escaped uh, from the home with me in her arm. And um, lucky me. Lucky me. Hmm. So where did you live after that? Yeah. After that, uh, on the east side, uh, let's see, uh, the first home I remember was actually uh, a little further east of Grandview, about Beaconsfield School, around 20th and Nanaimo, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, uh, there was a, a branch of, of Still Creek that was beside our house, really? and we oh, lived neat. in a little four-room shack uh, by the creek with a big pear tree with a Ukrainian across the street who uh, I befriended, uh, who worked as a rag pick picker in the adjacent dump, which mm -hmm. is where the, uh, the city dump was where the Italian cultural center is now. Mm -hmm. It was all a fill area for the old creek basin. And so uh, when I was you know, before school, uh, or around my first days in elementary school right there, um, uh, I joined the Ukrainian rag picker uh, in the dump and helped them out all day in my overalls and uh, I would come back smelling of the dump and um, but worse than that I smelled of garlic because uh, they were Ukrainian and we were Anglos and we didn't have garlic in our house and my old man, my, 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 my dad, my stepfather in truth uh, would say Jesus, he's been out with that goddamn Ukrainian again. <laughs> Except that I think the uh, the wrong terminology was uh, what what did people call Ukrainians? Galatians? In, no, no, it was uh, it'll come to me. But it was you know another crude thing from the 30s. Uh, but I delighted in it because it. I guess uh, when I think about my childhood, I was I loved the kind of flow of new immigrants hmm. that came into the East Side. Hmm. And for us, uh, sort of very conventional working class Anglos, it was, uh, you know, a wonderful whole new world. And also, wonderful Italian food. I got hooked for my life after the yeah. Italians, after the Second World War started really flooding into the neighborhood. And it was, uh, it was a one, and I'm, I'm, I'm totally hooked. I'm, a, I'm an Italophile completely. I almost go to Europe, Italy every, every okay. summer. Great. That just on contrasting the, your memories of the 30s with the 40s, do you yeah. remember the 30s as a depression and the 40s as boom times? Uh, to, a, to a degree. Uh, I mean, kids generally don't know how poor they are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I th I'm, I'm quite sure I did because, uh, you know, just getting some of the gains of rag picking or bottle picking uh, was, uh, you know, uh, exciting. I mean, it was a chance to get into that economy out there. Uh, it's but I can, treasure I can remember, yeah, I can remember picking up vegetables in the street, actually, mm. to help my family out mm. when I found them. Mm. So but the 40s were, uh, for a period, my dad uh, was in the Army. He never went overseas, but uh, so we were up in Vernon for uh, three years. There's a mm. big military camp mm. up there even now. And so uh, we lived in a tiny little place in Okanagan Landing, and uh, I would come down. Uh, I hated it up there as a kid. I loved the city. And I would come down and spend uh, the summer with my grandmother. And my grandmother lived in North Burnaby. And, uh, mm. and so it's still probably the deepest part of my memory, spending my summers with my grandmother, um, because uh, uh, she seemed wealthy by our standards. She had a, she owned a house, in, well, be it in North Burnaby with a plank road and you name it. Uh, but they were members of the North Burnaby Horticultural Society. And in those days, um, and the war effort, uh, there were horticultural societies in every neighborhood in this city. Quite fascinating. And so I de developed a love of plants and, and the growing things uh, at that early stage because she was determined to educate me. And I used to go to all the horticultural society sessions and see the quality of the fruits and vegetables and flowers and who won the gold ribbons and all that stuff. But more than that, the most indelible memory for me 
was going over to uh, her summer cabin, which is in the area now called Kate's Park, mm -hmm. and uh, near Roche Point in Dollarton. And uh, they were probably amongst the most enjoyable times in my life. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she kept a rowboat on the south side of the inlet, and so we would hike from Gilmore Avenue all the way up Capitol Hill, and she was my grandmother, and then over the hill and then down the other side to get to her boat, and somebody looked after it because there were shacks all along the CPR right of way in North Burnaby and the east side, and in Falls Creek and in Cold Harbor. All of our prime addresses now were squatters that didn't have a pot to pee in. Well, and no toilet to pee in either, <laughs> usually either, I recall. And uh, so uh, they were wonderful summers, and uh, my grandmother was a widow, and she was a flirt. And here I was, you know, a kid 10 to 12, and uh, I started understanding that what my granny really was. Well, it was another side of her. And uh, uh, my grandfather, uh, her husband, had been uh, a motorman on the street railway system, uh, and that was one of our great trade unions in the city, uh, Stry. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so uh, one of the other motormen uh, became her lover. and. Um, uh, he lived at home with uh, another woman he called his housekeeper and uh, of course uh, my grandmother was his mistress and uh, and I finally started <laughs> knitting all that stuff together and uh, um, so Charlie the lover would uh, kept a, a little putt-putt boat in Troll Harbor an old Briggs and Stratton mm -hmm. engine and on uh, whenever his two days off uh, he'd take the putt-putt right up the inlet and I'd watch for him coming under the bridge and, and uh, finally arriving at the cabin. And the cabin was very habitable, very, very pleasant place. And uh, I slept in uh, the living room and there was, it was a one bedroom cabin and uh, from my window I could look down the inlet and I could see the red Woodward sign from up there because it was one of the signs of civilization. And the other one was a light at Barnett uh, in North Burnaby, which uh, in those days was their city dump as well. And so that big gully in there uh, in Barnett, uh, so there was this one light. <laughs> and down uh, the inlet, uh, I never expected to get into all this, but it's what memory does for sure. you. Um, when you still got it. Uh, down near uh, the point, uh, at Roche Point, uh, Malcolm Lowry lived with Marjorie, yeah. and um, my grandmother said, Bobby, don't ever go near that man. He's talking, and he's in his just his khaki shorts and stumbling along the beach, and he's always drunk talking to himself. Don't go near him. So I didn't. I was a dutiful grandson, and yeah. I watched him, and I, he looked like trouble, all right. <laughs> and so uh, I avoided him, but, you know, uh, I, I knitted it all together, of course, a little later at night. Hmm. And, um, and so there was a fundamental thing that happened to, to me uh, there, and it was around the, the whole question of private property. I mean, we were squatters, yeah. and um, we knew uh, we didn't have any right to be there, so-called. And, uh, and in those earlier days, uh, during the war, and, and housing was really short in those days, um, other people would all, all you basically put up pilings and start building. In my grandmother's case, there was three friends that did a group of uh, shacks or cottages. Hers was a cottage, the others were shacks. <laughs> and, um, and so they'd put pilings up and stack things on it so it was possession. And um, so, but there was no water and no plumbing. And um, so getting water was always a chore and we might walk all the way along the up the trail and down the Dollarton Highway to uh, uh, Cummins General Store at the big bend of the road and, and the Dollarton Highway. It's not there anymore. Um, it's very upper middle class. Um, and uh, we'd pick up a few groceries because Charlie would always pay for them when he came on the weekend. And uh, But then the job would be to fill up two galvanized buckets of water when we were at the general store and then hike probably a mile and a half back to the cabin with buckets of water. 
the alternative, uh, when we had a little clinker built rowboat, was for Bobby to get in the rowboat and with buckets uh, go to the nearest creek, which was McCartney Creek. And McCartney Creek was on the other side of McKenzie Barge and Derrick, which is still there. And But there was a private owner there. He had a shack, too, that was no better than my grandma's. Uh, but he was a son of a bitch. And uh, I'm this little boy that's coming up on the rocky beach, and it's greasy and slimy, and I've got my cheap Japanese running shoes on and black denims, which embarrassed me at school because some of the teachers said, you shouldn't be wearing denims to school. Yeah. And they were only black denims in those days, and I think hmm. I think they were Asian, they were Oriental, so cheap shoes, hmm. cheap pants. And uh, anyway, scramble over the, the greasy rocks that were all covered with uh, seaweed and slime, up to where the water wasn't brackish, and, and fill the uh, two buckets, and generally with a ladle and partly with the buckets, and uh, then back the boat and hoping the old son of a bitch wouldn't see you who was up on, a, on his porch. But he generally would see you. And um, and so you, you, you're crouching down, you're just a little boy, and you're crouching down and you're carrying these two buckets into a clinker boat, you know, boat which is difficult, and then you're pushing the boat off, etc. Et well, if you were lucky, you know, half a bucket uh, each or something like that. And, and then you're ashamed of yourself. You're ashamed of yourself. Um, I'm a boy getting water for my grandma. Mm. And I, it cuts me up mm. even now. So, and then later, um, I read Malcolm Lowry. And he has a lovely uh, story called The Forest Path to the Spring. Mm. And it's exactly the same incident. Mm. It is exactly the same incident about feeling shame mm. and feeling um, how unjust it was. So, uh, our family was a left-wing family uh, anyway, but stuff like that, it just sticks, you know, it, you, you don't let go of it. And so I continue to have a view about property rights that are not conventional. So, uh, so I fit uh, naturally into the CCF and, uh, and the NDP, but most people nowadays don't you know, have any sense of, of, uh, of the... Of, uh, an element of injustice in property rights. The, the leadership today. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of you know, and I'm the ancient mariner for God's sake. So there, there you are. But it was a. I loved my summers there, and that was many, many years. And even, even in my dreams now, that's hmm. uh, the strongest element. Wow. But uh, it was a wonderful time.